Hello, everybody. How are you today? Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hope you're well. Hello. Um, this is Donya. I'm Brian. And, and we I are here on Genealogy Adventures, and we're here right now introducing to you guys Eunice Buffington. Hi, Eunice. How are you today? I'm good. I'm good. Hello, family. I'm Eunice Buffington, the family tree buff. <laughs> 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 That's awesome. So Eunice is actually related to Brian and I, but she has um, a lot of experience in researching the, the migration. And so we're going to talk to her today about that. And we hope that a lot of people will be able to be a part of that. And hopefully, as always, learn something new, get some new information, um, just really kind of push forward on your on to help you move forward on your research. Absolutely. So Eunice, we are just so, so pleased to have you on the show, because like I said, you have, you have an absolute wealth of information. Thank you. So the way we like to open up the show is if you'd like to spend, um, say, four or five minutes kind of talking about your background, your, you know, your areas of research, and kind of um, what was it about genealogy that kind of grabbed you and really sucked you in? <laughs> okay. Uh uh, I started uh, my search in genealogy. I started looking for my great grandfather, Asbury Buffington. Uh, I spent 27 years in the army. And while in the army, uh, a, a, a Caucasian soldier asked me, what did I know about my name? And I said, what do you mean? He said, what do you know about that name, Buffington? And I was really embarrassed because I didn't know anything about the name. Mm -hmm. but when I retired from the military, that, that question came back to me, like, what, is, what did he know about this name that I didn't know? And so I was in, in a, a master's course and I was writing, writing a, a, a paper. And on, in that paper, we had to do a, a, a family gram, a gram, and you had to, had to trace your family. And so I, that, that prompted me to start finding out about my great, great grandfather, who I knew had, was a mulatto and had been bought to Marshall County, Mississippi from Hall County, Georgia. So that I knew. And it was said in the family that he had some connection with the Cherokees. That's all I knew. Uh, and from that, that's what got me started. But what I found was so interesting that I had to keep going and keep going and keep going to connect the dots. And, and then DNA just opened up a whole different world. Uh, and so what I found was that my great great grandfather was part of the Buffington family that came, that migrated from, came from, from England all the way down from Pennsylvania, uh, Ohio, Georgia, Edgeville, South Carolina. When it was the 96th district, Joseph Buffington stayed and uh, lived there when it was the 96th district, which was mm -hmm. part of uh, Lauren, uh, uh, Spartanburg, all those, uh, those different counties now. But at that time, it was all one huge county. And he lived there, there uh, in the, uh, the annals of this, the slavery. He sold slaves. They bought and sold slaves. And so in the, there's a book in Edgefield, uh, in the uh, lineage in Edgefield, that uh, lists that there was a slave that was documented. Uh, it, it documents that slave and who that slave was sold to. And so there, that, 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 that starts the lineage of uh, those seeds being transported because a lot of them were sold to the Coxes, to the uh, Dugans, to uh, uh, other people who came to Marsha County, Mississippi and bought those enslaved people and bought that blood to Marshall County, Mississippi. And so I have traced those, those uh, I've been to South Carolina to the archives uh, and traced those roots all the way back. But what I found in tracing those, my ancestors, I found the, the trauma that they passed down from generation to generation, not only in the white families, but in the black families. And it's just a cycle of trauma that's passed down that started, it started actually before slavery, but for in the United States, it is the, the absolute crux coming from slavery. And so I, I my thing is, is connecting the dots, is to not only know those uh, 780 cousins on, on DNA, is to understand how I'm related to them. And to connect those dots uh, and understand how we're related around the world. And that's the white, the black, the Af African, uh, the, the Irish, to know how we're related. Uh, and in knowing that, we kind of kind of understand that we are really all one, one big family of different colors, all in one tree. Amen to that. Amen to that. <laughs> we, we definitely have a, um, a, a uh, 
we definitely can connect there, <laughs> especially with Edgefield. You know what I didn't say? I did not wish everyone a very happy Mother's Day. Yes, I'm a mom. Yes, Mother's. I'm a mom, and my children. My daughter brought me a drink, so that's what y'all see. It's just a, it's it's not bad. It's nothing, you know. But that's what Happy Mother's Day. Ms. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, we're here and we, I just want to make sure we wish everybody a happy Mother's Day. So uh, go ahead, Brian, what were you about to say? So my first question to, to Eunice was the, the Georgia kind of the Georgia connection with your ancestor. Did, was that something that was kind of related to your family orally or was that something that had popped out to you in a record that you had access? Uh, it... it... It popped out to me in a record. So the first record that I looked up for Asbury Buffington, he was in Hall County, Georgia. And so the name Asbury was just different. You just didn't find a whole lot of Asburys. <laughs> I knew that name though, but yes, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like Ezekiel, but even worse than Ezekiel, Asbury. And so he was in Hall County, Georgia. There was some tinkling that he did not come from Mississippi. We, do, we knew he didn't come from Mississippi. Right. Right. And so learning Hall County, Georgia, led me to go to Hall County, Georgia and do research there in Hall County, Georgia and connect the dot. And oh my goodness, when I was growing up, it was, it was my sisters and in, in, in school, there was just five of us. And if, if it was a Buffington at anywhere, they were, they were related to me and they were black and they were related to me. I went to Hall County, Georgia and there was Buffingtons everywhere, every color. And that's when I knew I was, I, that I had, went to where my grandfather came from and I had taken him back to his roots where he came from. Yeah. So this is what I find really, really interesting because whether it's my mother's side of the family or my father's, my direct line always stayed in place. So it's not like they were being sold down river. It's not like they were taken down river with the exception of Moses who you know, we were able to, um, to trace from Virginia to North Carolina. But when you're kind of working blind in that way, it's when you finally realize, oh, well, the, my origin story is actually outside of the state or uh, colony my ancestors living in. What kind of um, research strategy did you come up with to try to figure out, to try to move that story back in time? Well, I, I, it started with census, census records, uh, uh, well, census records that identified where they live. I used census records, uh, I used uh, archives. And so I would go to the archive, to the archives in that location. A lot of times the archives that we find online or, uh, uh, or what we find on Ancestry, you can find more when you go to the location. And so that helped me a lot because most, most uh, local libraries have the local history of that town. The, the people who, who begin, the, the early pioneers of the town, that may not be in another book that you're looking for online, but it's in the library in that local town, small little book about the, the origins of the, the original people that came there. Uh, those things helped me. Uh, and I have built a library of documents, uh, census records, uh, interviewing, talking to other people though, uh, to build that repertoire. Okay, and your ancestor, was he kept within the same enslaving family or was he sold at some point and then taken to another state? On my Buffington line, he was kept within the family. Uh, and so uh, it, it, was little, it was much easier to trace him. He was kept within the family. He was bought here with the white Buffingtons. They live next door to each other. They're on the census records together. Uh, he was given land from, from, the, from them. So it was easy to trace him back. Because if you trace them back to where they came from, then I could trace him back. On my Robinson line, who, uh, my great-great-grandfather was sold four times. And I have documents where he was, uh, different places that he was sold. But he also had, had part in that, in uh, Lawrence, South Carolina, which was part, at one time, part of that 96th district. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so on, on my Robinson line, also come from there. So that, my, that bloodline, Buffington, and Robinson, Buffington on my father's side, Robinson on my mother's side, came from South Carolina in that 96th district and migrated to Mississippi. And so there's a big, 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 uh, when I first did my DNA, I had so many uh, DNA matches that I had no clue how we were matched to that was in South Carolina. 
Where's all this South Carolina how the people at? I even went to the I even went to the family reunion, the calling all breakfast family reunion. I'm going to find my people to find out how we <laughs> Yes, you did. Yes, you did. <laughs> she ended up coming to the reunion. Um so we have questions for you. Uh, I'm not asking questions because I kind of know Eunice's story. And so Brian, so Brian is really kind of getting in because Eunice and I, because she came to the, the calling on branches um, reunion, she and I talked a lot. So we know, we I, I know her story. I know what she's doing. So I'm really kind of letting Brian just kind of ask these questions, let him get them all out. If I, if I think of something that I don't remember, then I'll go ahead and do it. Uh, I but I know, huh? But I can just jump in really quickly before um, we take a take our audience question. So Eunice, you were saying that you found your, for your Robinson ancestor, he had been sold four times. Mm -hmm. that you were able to find records for each one of those sales is a miracle because we know how difficult that is. Yes. I just wonder if you could spend a little bit of time talking about what those records were and, and where you found them. Okay, on, the, on my Robinson side, uh, Martin Robinson, I initially, our DNA matched to the Garrett line, LaBrenda Garrett, uh, and I could not understand, I was and I was tracing, I did a, a, a Y-DNA for a, a, a grandson of Martin, tracing that line. And I and I matched all uh, the Brenda Garrett's, uh, and her brother, her father. Oh, wow. wow. The Brenda did, wrote a book. <laughs> she did a book about her family. Mm -hmm. And in that book, she mentioned, she she had the slave document records where her great-great-grandfather had been enslaved. Enslaved with him was my great-great-grandfather, Martin. He was enslaved with Jesse Garrett, but Martin mm -hmm. kept his, his name. He was sold, Jesse Garrett put in his will, when I, uh, at, at my death, sale Negro man, Martin. Martin was then sold to Thomas Hinton. And so the, the uh, tracing those records, uh, going to the courthouse and tracing those records back at the courthouse, uh, those slave records, those documents, tracing those records back, uh, I was able to find the will. I was able to find the will of, of uh, Jesse Garrett that it had that in there and who he was sold to. And so I was able to trace from to him to Thomas Henderson. Uh, it, it appears that uh, my great great grandfather ran away when the, when the Civil War began because he was in the Civil War. The, the Hendons and the Robinsons were Confederates, and so I and he was on, and he was in, in the, on the Union side. So I, it is uh, it, it is my spectator that he went he ran away right. you know, when, when, when the slavery began. But we, but I was able to find those documents. Uh, with DNA, I was able to trace those documents and go to the courthouses uh, and find slave records, uh, the, the probate records, uh, and census records to, to show to prove that, that those things. So, okay, so now I, now I do have a question because this is stuff that we, we know things now that we didn't know two years ago. Mm -hmm. For example, the Garrett line. Mm -hmm. I remember meeting LaBrenda. And she does mention you on the comments. She says that the two of you are related. She has already, she had already <laughs> said. It. And um, the thing is, is that I remember meeting when I, I remember when I first met LaBrenda. I was taught. I think I was talking to her about my uh, Elijah Fleming story. Mm -hmm. And um, I didn't know anything. I didn't know too much about the Garretts. But now, let's fast forward two years. To hit to now, and I know a lot about the Garrett's because we have another cousin who's doing Garrett research that you will need to meet. Her name okay. is Yolanda Grimes. She has gone completely back on them, and I mean, way back, done excellent, excellent work on them. So both you and LaBrenda need to meet. But here's the kicker Yolanda has pointed out to me because I remember when you and I talking, we couldn't, we just did not know where we, where we possibly crossed that. Talking with Yolanda, I think it's gonna be through the Garrett's because I have at least three different Garrett marriages on my tree. Or okay. the Robinsons, or the Robinsons. The Robinsons, the Robinsons yes. No, but, and but then Dunya you mentioned Henderson and I'm like, wait a minute, because that takes us back to who? Moses Williams. That's why we, that's what we relate at Danya, Moses Williams. So uh, Perrin, uh, of, of those slaves that was sold in Edgefield, uh, Abner Perrin bought from Mary Buffington, a slave, Narissa. 
and uh, that that line, that parent line, married into your Williams line. Okay, but see, parents married into the Yeldales, honey. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's still your line. But it's still my line, right? <laughs> but, and so that's where and still, they also they did all of that. So that's where my bloodline that comes into yours is that parent line. That was wow. a slave that was so a buffeted slave that was sold to parent. Once one of the white parents impregnated one of her her ancestors, her, her descendants, and there our line comes. So, okay, very quickly, um, I'm going to go to the producer because according to some of our um, watchers, there are some audio issues. A fever, do you know anything about that? Uh, no, everything seems good here, but I'll, I'll, I'll stop it and I'll reconvene it on the live stream on Facebook. Okay, so everybody, he's going to drop it and then I want you to stop and then give it a minute and come back on so he could try to make it right. All right. So we're going to do Actually, that. Before, before dropping out, because <clears throat> you're, you're fine now. I think it was your audio. It started to lag, but you seem to have come, you seem to have come back. Mine? Yeah. Oh, okay. Because they were saying audio issues all around. They didn't say me. Oh, okay. All right. But will we be able to get back into this live feed? Because then we're no, gonna not have... us, not us. He's gonna. What you gonna do, Afiba? Yes, I'm just starting a live on Facebook. Uh, over. That's all. He's just starting a Facebook live over. So you guys drop out for a sec, and he's gonna start it over. Okay, go ahead, do that. Yep. Give me um. Give me one minute. Do we need to leave? No, yeah. we don't have to go anywhere. He had to okay. re. Yeah, he just has to restart the um the video on Facebook. Okay. It's like being on CNN. <laughs> <laughs> They're having all kinds of issues at the minute. <laughs> so yeah, I didn't realize we had all of those surnames in common. No, no. Idea. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> we have to, we have to have a whole nother show on, on our common surnames. I mean, I've really uh, reset, reshare. Went all the way back and, and, and able to connect a lot of our, our find out a lot of our connections. Okay, we're back on live on Facebook. Okay. Welcome back. Welcome back, everybody. So go ahead. So yeah, th that is something else. I didn't know that we had all of those. Um, those I didn't know. And it's so funny what two years can do. Right. <laughs> It's so funny what two years can do because I swear to you, I'm I don't remember, you know, <laughs> we didn't know. So Donia, you have some questions from the audience, I believe. Well, you actually asked the question. That was okay. the question about the records. Got okay, it. about the records. Okay. It was about the records from the audience, but now the audience is coming back in and they're saying they're back up. Okay. So now I have to reshare to all of the groups that I just shared to. <laughs> So we're sorry about that, that guys. Mm -hmm. So in terms of, well, actually, this is a good question. Um, what was it like the first time that you started going into those estate probate records? And you would, for those of us who've been using them for a long time, for me, it was really, really jarring seeing a list of items like mm -hmm. Teaspoons, silver spoons, wooden mixing spoons, like mm -hmm. an axe, a shovel, the female mule called Dolly, and then mm -hmm. you get and then you get human beings. Then you get Negro, Negro, Negro girl, Sally, Negro yes. boy, Negro man. Listen. How did that? How did that how, the, I mean, what was your reaction to that the first time you saw it? It was actually heart wrenching. The, the first time I, I, I must say it was heart wrenching, even though I'd read about it. It was really heart wrenching when I, uh, on my great great grandfather Martin Robinson, to see his name, to actually see his name listed as a slave belonging to somebody. That was so heart wrenching for me. And so, uh, uh, one of the things that, that slavery did, it produced a lot of trauma. A lot of trauma was, was produced in slavery, the, just the act of beating somebody just to act of the sexual abuse. And that trauma, and through my research is what I've found, is what's passed down generation after generation after generation after generation. 
and, uh, and just that lynching that the the young guy that got killed mm. that's trauma that's lynching he was lynched he they just used a, a a gun and not a rope but that trauma came from slavery and that ideology that you can own somebody that you're better than another person came from that trauma that came from slavery and so if we don't go back and and, and peel it back and, and, and own that and understand where that came from, we are just, we'll, we'll find all our, our people in our tree and still don't, won't have the answer. So you're saying we, what do you mean by we? Who is we? Everybody, as humanity, yes. That's, it's not that's just awesome. black people, it's not just, not white, just white people. people. That's right. It's not, it's Native, Native American, it's humanity. It's humanity because that trauma was passed down, not just to, to us. We got a different different view, but that trauma, the, the trauma of taking your child to go to a lynching, and that child sees that, that child breathes that in, that trauma is passed down to that child, so that child thinks that it's okay to do that to another person if that person did X, Y, Z. That trauma is passed down generation after generation. So one person in the family may see, I would never do that. I would never be involved in that. But one person in the family may say, that was okay that we went to, we went to that, that lynching and that ideology is passed down, it's passed down. There is um, an American um, academic and researcher by the name of Dr. Joy, Dr. DeGruz. Joy DeGruz, uh -huh. um, who's done intensive, just long amounts of research on what she calls post-traumatic slave syndrome. Oh, or or disorder. disorder. She, she does PTSS and PTSD. But it's basically that that trauma in terms of people who are descended from slaves is actually hardwired into our DNA. Yes. Why we have, not, which is why we have such an aggravated kind of flight or fight response because we know mm -hmm. that our, our lives literally depend on it. But mm -hmm. just piggybacking on what you just said, in 2008 in London, she, she basically asked this mostly white audience these, these questions. She's like, so when the, when the slave master sold, you know, sold your baby and you, were, you knew you were never going to see it again, did he provide you with um, counseling or a social worker or a psychologist mm. or a counselor? Mm. She's like, when he lynched your husband because your husband tried to stop him from raping you, mm -hmm. did you get counseling? And she just ran right. down all of these scenarios and she's like, no, we had, she's like, we had to go inwards and channel that strength to be able to get through that. And she even went further to say, your children saw that too. They there we go. That's what yes. I was going to say. Yes. That's where the trauma, that's where the, the cycle of passing that trauma down. Yes. Not only did her children see that, the slave master children saw what he was doing. So the trauma is not only passed down to the enslaved, the trauma is passed to the enslaver. She used, you. If I, it's a famous um, picture of three African-Americans being hung. Mm -hmm. And she used that picture. And when she used that picture, everybody saw it. And she was like, this is one of the pictures that people just, you know, they know, but it's still hard to look at. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, she told the people, you know, you see the people. She said, but now I'm going to take you deeper because what you're looking at, all you see is the three people that are hanging. Then she says, I'm going to take you deeper. And this might not have been in the London one. I don't, I'm not, I can't remember because she did too. I saw, I, I followed her ever since that. But she took um, them deeper and she scrolled into the picture and she saw a child. Wow. And then you saw another child. Uh -huh. And then we saw another child. And she was like, y'all didn't know that they were there? These are babies that mm -hmm. are watching these particular mm -hmm. things happening. And what's not taught in school and what we as genealogists learn is that at these lynchings, at, at these particular um, hangings, because I'm going to say hangings, because Webster's Dictionary says that a lynching is when someone is killed without legal representation first without a legal trial something to that nature it's like that so it a lynching doesn't necessarily have to be a hanging and that's what people need to understand that's right, why right. when you made the comment about the young man um that just was killed on just was killed back in february and it's now coming out 
his father said it was a lynching and it was mm -hmm. it really was when you look at the definition of what mm -hmm. lynching is it was a lynching without mm -hmm. any doubt just, but the, the thing about it is is that with those with that picture she went into another detail that genealogists know but it's not taught in schools is that after the eyes are bulging out after the the they're losing their bowels after all of the things that happen to them when they're him they then use those people as target practice and mm -hmm. they take pieces of them home mm -hmm. so these babies mm -hmm. had to watch these guys and women shoot these folks so they could take a piece of them home. Mm -hmm. Take fingers, ears, ears. Exactly. Mm -hmm. How does anyone think that that did not traumatize a child? Most definitely. Most so, definitely. okay, go ahead. I, I'm, I'm going to lay back now. Go ahead. I'm going to take the sip because. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was, I was, I was just going to close this one out to kind of bring a little bit of genealogy back into it is this is particularly unnerving to me because both me and another researcher, Martine Brennan in Ireland, and we've got a little little uh, research group, in, uh, oh, I've forgotten her name, um, Kaylee as well. You know, we're, we're researching the Weeping Time people, and that mm -hmm. includes Glen County, as well as McIntosh County, where, you know, that's where Glen County is where the young man was actually lived. So, you know, we're going backwards in time, you know, stretching to the period before the weeping time, finding the, the original Africans who were shipped into South Carolina. So, you know, it's in the back of my mind going, you know, um, Ahmed could actually be a descendant of the very people that Martine and Callie and I are actually researching. That's right. So that's kind of really hit us on a, on a whole other level. So I just kind of wanted to close out close out with that. So the whole thing is very relevant to me. Wow. Now, in terms of your ancestry, your enslaved ancestors were just shipped. It just seems everywhere. They were. Because <laughs> you, know, you also had enslaved people who were in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. um, yes. how, did you, how did you stumble across that tale? What, you know, yeah. what, what records led to that discovery? The, uh, uh... The dolls, the dolls, the dolls, dolls commissioned all the records in the dolls commission that record the Native Americans uh, as they were uh, when they on, on the trail of tears when they got to Oklahoma and they were trying to establish themselves. They set up the, the dolls commission, and so uh, I was able to trace my ancestors uh, in that record because through DNA I knew that one of my DNA DNA matched cousins who lives in Oklahoma, his his ancestors came from. Uh, Hall County, Cherokee, Cherokee County, Georgia, which was all, all that part was part of Cherokee land uh, before the before the end. Of, all that was part of Cherokee County, part of the Cherokee Indians uh, <clears throat> had that land, and so I was able to use those records uh, again, census records, maps, uh, the Dawes Commission records. Um, there's another rose, the uh, Drennan rolls, uh, to document my family to, in Oklahoma. Okay, and how did they even get there? They were forced to walk there. <laughs> they were actually forced to walk there on the on the Trail of Tears. Uh, uh, many died on the Trail of Tears, and so uh, in there, when they were were were, were questioned on the Dolls records, some of them told of their tri trials and tribulations on the trails. So some oh. of them told that, yeah, some of them in their in their tribulation, they told that I had a child that died, that my grandmother died as walking on the Trail of Tears. And so uh, you, you're able to put together the story by those little pieces, these little pieces that somebody died and that and that they had to leave her. Mm. And they, that they had to, yes, right. So mm. you're able to pick up the trauma, that's trauma. You're able to pick up those pieces of trauma just in reading their stories that the, that, the, that the grandmother died and they had to leave her. They had to bury her under a brush in a shallow grave and leave her. So, so have you, the people that you've connected to via DNA, um, you, even though you've connected to them DNA, have you figured out how you connected to a lot of them DNA? Like, do you know who the common ancestor is with most absolutely, of them? Absolutely, absolutely. That is my wow. ultimate ultimate goal that's all of our goals <laughs> <laughs> that's my ultimate ultimate goal every time i make a connection 
is to find out how we're connected. And not only to find me find out and me know, is to let you know. And so I let that person know how we're connected. Now, whether they uh, indulge in it, whether they want to be involved or not, that's up to them. But I will say we are DNA matched, they have DNA blood, and we share DNA blood from this is our common ancestor. And I've had a lot of positive, very positive re uh, response from all my ancestors, Cherokee, Native American, white. I I've had positive response. Because have, you had, have you had any negative? I've had people who didn't want to know. Okay. They weren't negative to me. They just didn't want to know. And so I sent the information that I never hear from you again, that um, you, you, you lock your tree down after that. Those people who, don't, who are not ready to know. <laughs> and so I understand that. I accept that. Uh, and so I, I haven't had any, just, they come out and say anything negative. Uh, they always want to know, do you have any proof? What is your proof? Mm -hmm. Yes, and that's when they all of a sudden become, you know, 50 year, gen, you know, experienced geneticists. Well, you know, you start sit hearing, well, you know, autosomal, not reliable, <laughs> not accurate. <laughs> like, oh, okay, it's accurate for you, but when it's mm -hmm. not making mm -hmm. connection to the family, all of a sudden it's, it's, it's not particularly reliable. Um, I wanted to ask you questions just, um, uh, as an example. So say for instance, I discover I have um, an ancestor in who is enslaved in Texas. And I'm looking at the 1870 census and it says, you know, Martha Ann was actually born in North Carolina. What advice would you give someone to try to figure out to push her story back into North Carolina and possibly find her people there? Uh, 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 I always start with the census records. If, uh, if, uh... Because the 18, that 1870 census, as we as genealogists know, that's our that's a pivotal census for us. And so, if I if I can find them on the 1870 census with any uh, and and just that one line carries so much information, uh, what kind of work they did, uh, where they were born at, where their mother was born at, where their father was born at. And so, using th that information, it's like being an investigator. Uh, if their father was born in North Carolina, then you look for that surname in, in another state, maybe. Uh, and so I use, uh, it's, it's almost like being an investigator. And so uh, you, you use whatever uh, bit of information that you have to reveal the next bit of information. Okay. Uh, and I use that with documents and I support that with some kind of document that supports that uh, information. Now so in you just, oh, go ahead, Brian. So in your family during that time period, say, you know, ancestors or family who were born between 1830 and like 1850. Do you also find that, did, did your family use how, like a naming convention? Were children named after specific people within the family? Absolutely, I, I did find that. And, and um, if you're not a genealogist, you don't even think about that. You don't, uh, I did a story that's it's called Names Matter. <laughs> naming, yeah, naming patterns matter. And so, mm -hmm. um, some families, some families had an actual pattern of naming their children. So the firstborn ch child would be named after the mother's maiden name. Uh, and I, those are ways you can use, I use to find people because mm -hmm. if, if I could cross reference those ma the maiden name and a surname. Uh, so I did find those patterns. I did find patterns with, uh, uh, with the, the, the daughter being, met, being named after a grandmother. Uh, and, and those naming patterns, yes. Well, I've even found some naming patterns actually indicate some sort of a religious link because um, we, we share common enslaving Quaker ancestors. Okay. So even if I'm in North Carolina, Georgia, South Carolina, and I'm seeing, especially for mulatto and, and black people, names like Charity, Hezekiah, Mordecai, Ezekiel, Elijah, I'm like, you have a connection to the Quakers. I could almost eliminate anyone else. And I'm like, what Quaker families are living in that county? And where it, did you come from? Especially Ezekiel. Ezekiel is very, very common in, in my Buffington line, Buffington and Harlan yeah. line. Ezekiel yep. Buffington, yes. <laughs> um, so one person, because there seems to be one person up here other than LaBrenda and now um, Yolanda, because <laughs> they both want to talk to you. There's another woman by the name of Latifa Joyner Williams. She wants to know if you have a tree on Ancestry. I do. And DNA. I do. I have a public tree on Ancestry. It's called DNA, DNA Matches under my name, Eunice Buffington. 
Uh, and it's a huge, huge tree. That's that's the tree that I have all the matches to. And so, yes, I do. I also have a tree on family tree, family tree DNA. Uh, and I have about 20 people that I've tested on family tree DNA and about 15 on ancestry. And so I manage uh, the, the DNA kits of at least 35 family members. Wow. So another question was how much how much does land records show you? Which Brian and I have a whole lot on that. <laughs> <laughs> it shows a lot. It shows a lot. A lot of uh, initially I was thinking that my great great grandfather did not have lands. And a lot of times we think that our our ancestors did not own land. But those land records was able to show not only what land they own, where they got it from, where that land came from, where it was transferred from, and then who they, who, then if you follow the record, who they transferred to, it may be their sons, their daughter, it may be a, a child that you didn't know, you didn't see in the census records, but that land was transferred to that child, and now you have the name of a new child that you didn't see somewhere else because you were able to track that through those land records. Mm -hmm. And also, Again, talking about you know the enslavement of people, you have a black or mulatto ancestor who all of a sudden is getting a couple hundred acres of a former enslaver's property. Mm -hmm. There may be a biological link there that you may want to dig in to, to investigate. Yes, yes. Well, you have a couple of new um, matches right on this thing because uh, King Cooley says DNA matches came across that one today. We share ancestors in trees. <laughs> okay. so I'll be looking for you. <laughs> yes, as always, our guests are always welcome to you know look peruse the um the comments and if they have something that they want to answer that we may a question that we may have not been able to get to, they are welcome. And as all Eunice, you are welcome to go on there and see whatever they are, so you guys can probably connect up. And that that's that's awesome. And Stacy Marshall Mobley said, land records are amazing gems and that they are. Mm -hmm. Yes, they are. Because we're the same and we see two people like around 1870, 1871 with the same surname, but we've never seen them connected in any way, shape or form, but they're living next to each other. Mm -hmm. You start looking at the names of their kids and it's like, they may not be naming children after each other, but they're clearly naming children after a common ancestor. And right. You know, so have me, you ever found a doppelganger family? White, and what black, I mean by that, white, black, white and black ones I have. Literally white and black families with exactly the same. <laughs> oh, I know you and I did. <laughs> oh, I know. I was at, that's what I was asking her. Have you with found that? <laughs> with the same names? All the oh, same most names? definitely. We've come across a family, a black family and a white family, not only with the same names of the mother, the father, the children, but also birth years, almost identical wow so you know i'm wondering because you know that you are definitely connected to the white buffingtons have you ever come across almost a doppelganger type thing not not as close as a doppelganger very very close close in similarity whether you, you see some of the similar names okay uh, and those those help me identify naming patterns that you just got to be a family that i'm looking for that their same names are repeating themselves but i have not found where there was a exact same name there it's not like that yeah, we we yeah, that, wow. You will. You're in. You're in it. You'll you'll find it. <laughs> you'll find. It. I guess in terms of this conversation, I I would think that the ones that would be the most challenging to research are infants and young children mm. who, were, who were sold into the deep south away from their parents. Yes. Yes. Because I'm only going to assume that no one would have told them who their parents were. They may not have even told them where they came where from. Where they came yes, from. where they even came from, exactly. And so I'm just wondering, I haven't come across that in my research. Have you come across that in yours? Yes, yes, I have. And only through DNA was I able to find how we were DNA connected, and it was through a, a child. And that's on, on my Robinson line, <clears throat> uh, a child was sold from William Moore sold to... Uh, uh, Jos Josiah Robinson, a young child slave named Tempe. They transported that slave Tempe to Tishomingo County, Mississippi. Tempe uh, had, had several children. One of her children uh, had children by uh, William Anderson Robinson, who was the son of the enslaver. 
-hmm. I have now DNA matched to all of those, to, to those, and they would have been able to make that connection. It was through Tempe who was sold as a child. Wow, wow. So another question was asked earlier. Um, do you spell Robinson? How do you spell Robinson? Uh, it is spelled different ways in different trees for different people. R-O-B-E-R-S-O-N, R-O-B-I-N-S-O-N, R-O-B-E-R-T-S-O-N, same family lines, uh, just a different spelling of the name. And it depends on the location, it seems, as to the uh, how they spell the name. Because Rob Burson, the E-R-S-O-N, mm -hmm. I tend to see that in, North, for whatever reason, I tend to see that in North Carolina. North Carolina, absolutely. Northern, North Halifax, North Carolina. all around there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, another question was, where did it go? I just lost it. Go ahead, Brian. Oh, no, I thought you had another, I thought you had another question. I did. I can't find it. It just disappeared <laughs> on me. I did. Oh, here it is. Martine asked if she wanted to know if you had found any matches in Canada. I have not. I have not. Not that I've worked with. And just keep in mind, it's, it's 820 matches. Okay. <laughs> so not that I have worked with. There may be a match in Canada. Now, uh, just that, that question will make me now check and see. Now, I'm, I'm seeing yeah. Brian is going to ask the question that I was getting ready to ask because we're always on the same wavelength. So go ahead, Brian. <laughs> Well, I was going to say on Martine's behalf, Martine is my research buddy for the um, the Weeping Time. Mm -hmm. If you find that you have any matches in Halifax, Nova Scotia, mm -hmm. please get in touch. Okay. <laughs> well, Brian wasn't thinking what I was thinking. He was helping Martine. So I'm going to go a different route. Have you ever um, uploaded your DNA to other places like JetMatch, MyHeritage, and things like that to help you find other Family. Yes, yes, absolutely. Be so are heritage. you on Jet Match? I'm on I mean, Jet not, Match. Not, not Jet Match, My Heritage. I'm on My Heritage, yes. Go to My Heritage because they are really, really good with the um, international. You get okay. a lot. I, I get, I think I have more international on My Heritage than I do on Ancestry. Okay. So yes. check that one. You might want to check that one. We'll do. Sure will. And in terms of your like Mississippi, Mississippi Ancestry, um, again, it's not really a, an area that I've done in-depth research in. Are you finding things like um, the Freedman labor contracts? Abs yes. Uh, there, was, there was actually a concentration camp uh, in Mississippi. Uh, Corinth was one of the uh, concentration camps after the Civil War that they, they set up. And so there's, uh, uh, there's a wealth of Freedman records that uh, I have used to trace my ancestors. Yes. Okay. I was gonna and church records. Freeman records and church records. Mm -hmm. uh, in, the, in the African American community, especially right after slavery, the church was the way we, uh, we disseminated information. Uh, and so those, those initial church records are a great way to find out where our people were, where they came from. Yes. And so I used also church records. Great. Y Yolanda Graham said, Have you, and this is actually a good question. And Brian, we need to, I don't think this has ever happened. I, I don't think I've ever had this happen to me. She said, have you ever come across a sibling who was listed deceased but a, by a slave parent on a Freeman document, but the child was not deceased? Has, I've never had that happen. Hmm. I, no. I have not. I have not. And the child was listed deceased. I have not. No, yeah, uh, like a hiding of the child almost. Right, yeah. yeah. Or I guess if the child was sold away, and, and they didn't know anything about it, yeah. No, right. Mm -hmm. they, got, they got word through the grapevine, oh, you know, really, really sorry, but they died without right. actually having the, the proof of that. Mm -hmm. Right. Because that again, that's, Mo that's, the heartbreaking, that's the heartbreaking thing right after um, the emancipation is all of these parents looking for their children and all yes. of these looking mm -hmm. for their parents. Yeah, right. that was one of the, the hardest things for me was to look through the newspapers right after emancipation and just to see all these wanted or lost or trying to find, trying to find their families. Yes. Yeah. Those, those were definitely something else. They were definitely, you, yeah, those were something else. Uh, Stacy Marshall Mobley, she asked, how much should we trust family folklore? I find it to be somewhat true in many cases, but not 
usually 100 percent. so i'm gonna let y'all go through this and then i'm gonna add because I, I i have a certain feeling about this particular question so i'll start first and then i'll let brian step in i i I give some credence to family folklore. Had I not listened to that my great-great-grandfather came from, did not come from Mississippi, I would have been stuck researching in Mississippi. And so that came from family folklore. He was dead long before I was born. It was family folklore that he didn't come from here. So that led me to say, I got to look somewhere else to look for him. So I, uh, and family folklore said that he was a mulatto, that he was, that he was mixed. I never seen a picture of him. And then looking at my skin, I would have never thought he was mixed. So I have to put some credence in family folklore. Then I follow that up with some document to support that. Right. So some of that, some of the folklore get 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 pushed out because it ends up I can't find anything to support that. And so that that is just folklore. I didn't find anything to support that. But then some of that becomes our factual history, our family history. Right. That I can read. Yes. Right. I've got two quick ones. You know, my mother's father, we grew up hearing he was a big burly Irishman, Patrick Turner. So come to find out, okay, he wasn't African descended. My great grandfather was indeed European, but he was Jewish, not you know, Jewish from Belarus, not Irish. So that was that was an interesting one. Um, something that was true that we believed to be false. My father's mother insisted that her family had Native American, and we were like, yeah, Granny. All right, we're all, we're all Native American. Come to find out, she was right. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Yes. Well, I have a certain feeling about this <laughs> <laughs> because, and the reason why I have a feeling about it is because I am. There, there are stories that have been passed on in in my family. Not a lot of stories. First and foremost, it's not a lot of stories, but there are some. But when you start to find or prove, because this is why, why I came up with genealogy is like geometry. You have to set your hypothesis and then you have to prove your proof. And the hypothesis is that folklore. It is said that so-and-so is so-and-so and whatever. Now I have to prove that that is correct or wrong. My issue with the folklore is that if I prove it to be wrong, please don't get angry at me. Mm. Mm -hmm. Because mm. I proved it to be wrong. Um, those are that that I have a really I have a really big issue with that because when I'm finding out, because my family is so secretive and so kept to themselves that right now we have a story that's going on in our family without saying any family name or what have you, that we're just meeting a whole bunch of members and some people are still holding against us something that we didn't even know. And that's part of their trauma. <laughs> That's well, I mean, I would say that, but this is something totally different. This is this this is a family who's who were children of someone, and because they were children of someone, one we only knew one of the kids, and that's all that we knew was one of the kids. We didn't know that that person had a whole nother set of children. So now here we are, fast forward. This might have happened. 50 years ago and now we here we are fast forward and I'm finding these people and you have folks that still don't want to meet us because they're holding on to that particular type of anger mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. crushes me because I don't know you and I didn't do it and I didn't I, I don't know you and we have to we have to somehow fix that we have to somehow close that gap because this is why African Americans have the issues that they have now. We hold so much against each other. We don't even know why. We, you're right. We don't know why because we never address where it came from. Yes. We, we never can. We never can get to where that anger comes from. Yes. It, it's yeah, not, I mean, it's, it's just. It, it didn't so even come from us. It comes through us. Through us. That's it. Yes. <laughs> it's not from us. <laughs> Don't forget, for centuries, we were not allowed to express emotions, specifically negative emotions. Right, right. 
Right. And we were, if we did, something would happen. We would get hurt. We would get right. beat. And again, that's just that's uh, that just goes back to all, all of the different things that are going on with African Americans now today, because we're always to blame as to why we got hurt. We oh. it's our fault. You know, we we did it. It is this young man's fault. And I'm sorry, I'm going back. But it, it is this young man's fault that he was killed because he didn't stand there and let a retired police officer and his son coming at him with two guns. Mm -hmm. He didn't stand there and let that happen. He should have let that happen. Right. You know, these are things, these are, these are reasons. This is why, in my opinion, a conversation needs to be had. You know, we need to talk. We need, we, meaning African-Americans, white Americans, we literally sit around, sit at that table, have that discussion, figure it out. No, everybody, 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 Native Americans, Native Americans, Americans, yeah, I mean, just everybody, yes. Native yes. Americans, they all need to figure it out. I think I, I, I think I, um, I, I, I said those two because not saying that they have the biggest beef, but, but just saying that because throughout American history, white Americans were the superior. They're the ones that taught the history that's being taught to all of the other races mm -hmm. right now. So it needs to be, it needs to be fixed. Like all of this is, all this just needs to be fixed. It's, it's time for it to just stop. It needs to be fixed. They need to Everybody own it. Own it. What you have to do? It, yeah, to fix it, it has to be owned. It, and and to, until to change so, anything, you have to own. Yeah, I'm. Yeah. It. Okay, we're gonna give it off for that because I that that I'm like extremely. I'm on, I'm on a I'm I'm trying to figure out the best way for all of us to get to that point where we can talk about. Because I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm like this is this is over the top, and I'm I'm angry, and I think I'm angry because I was reared in a different way. And not only was I reared in a different way, I was around people who were a different way, both black and white. I had a principal who made sure that while the race fights were going on at the other high schools, he was like, not in my house. You understand but what I, I'm saying? But I think as genealogists, all of us, including our audience, we have a different perspective because we get the history. We get that there's that father and a son chasing Ahmad Aubrey down the street were slave catchers. Mm -hmm. There's no other way to describe those two men as other than acting as poor whites who thought they were better than blacks because they were slave catchers. They had the authority to do whatever they wanted to black bodies, black and brown bodies. I see a lot of examples of that from our ancestry. We can, we can tick off the names, we can tick off the dates, we can tick off the scenarios. And I think what really pains me, I can only speak on my behalf on this one, what pains me is it's no different than 1815, 1835, 1878, 1715, 1968. It's still happening. Right. There's always, yeah. an, there's always an excuse. Always. Yeah, it's always. And, it, and that's what I said and I'm, and when I wrote my little note. <laughs> on Facebook and I, I wrote my note and I'm like, I need you to point out to me what's the difference? That's that's one of my main questions. What's the difference? If And, and I made sure that I, I said between, because for some, like you said, for genealogists, we can take it back. And this is, is, this is Black, White, Native American, whatever, whoever it is, that, whoever's doing research, they can go back and they can see that there is no difference, that there is no change. That, or not that there's no change, but they can see the repetitiveness. Mm -hmm. That's what we as genealogists can see. We can always find that repetitiveness of these different things. But those who don't do that research and only go by the teachings that is given to them in schools, it is... is the, the earliest time for them is going to be the civil rights movement. And that's when they see the holes being splashed on the African-Americans and, you know, depending upon the races that you're talking about, I'm talking about African-American race. So mm -hmm. that's when they're going to see the holes being splashed, the dogs being pushed out. The, you know, that's when they're going to see that. And I, and I made sure that I said, and, you know, for those 
I'm talking about civil rights movement because that's the earliest for you that you could say something. So where do you see it being different from that point? That's a huge thing to me because the civil rights movement was not a hundred years ago. You understand what I'm saying? It wasn't a hundred right. years ago. Was it 50? Was it 75? I mean, it, it, I'm, I'm trying to, I can't get the math right now in my head for it. Well, put, but it, was it, way, put it this way, I was alive. How about that? I was <laughs> so that, you know, that the latter part of it was well within my lifetime and well within my living memory. Okay. Wow. I know I got a bunch of people out there going, damn it, how old is he? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I would like to leave something uh, uh, with, with the audience, a hypothetical question that I'd like to leave the, to the audience. Hypothetically, would you have killed, would you have hit, would you have abused, would you have sexually abused, would you have hated, would you have maimed a person of a different color if you would known that person was blood related to you, just a different color? And so if we think about that, that hypothetically, if you had known that that was your great, 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 great grandmother's descendant that you killed, shot, raped, maimed, what, whatever the negative connotation is, would you have done it if you had you known that was your relative? Can I put an addendum? Can I put it just a tiny addendum to that? Sure. Or or would you have also spoken out? Hey. It's the, oh, okay. it's the right. difference. As I'm gonna say this and I'm gonna probably get just a heap of abuse, but I'm gonna say it. You know I got your back, cuz. I almost have more respect for a racist or a white supremacist who stands up and says, I am a racist, uh -huh. I'm a white supremacist, because I know who I'm dealing with. Right. Mm -hmm. It's the people who, well, it's none of my business, doesn't affect me, mm -mm, keep my head down, the indifference. Mm -hmm. That's right. I'm not say nothing because I don't want to cause any issues. That's the group of that. I think that was always the larger group of Americans, and that's the group that I have the issue with. Okay, is well, most of them knew that it was wrong, whatever mm -hmm. happened, they knew it was wrong, didn't speak up, didn't speak up. Yes, well, we have one cousin named Tommy who I haven't seen in a while. Hey, Tommy, hey, Tommy. Tommy, yeah, <laughs> Tommy Gary said he answered your question, and in his, in his opinion, he said some people still wouldn't care based on because of the moral hate. And, okay. and he's right. There are some out here that will look at me, even though they're my cousin and we are of a different race, they're looking at me like, like no, that's not my cousin. I don't care what you say. Mm -hmm. And so that's, no, what, that's what I think we have to go back a little bit farther to go back and, 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 and peel back why you feel that, that you're so different that you can't even acknowledge that this is your blood person, a person that's blood related to you because they look different than you. Cause that's the only thing different. We look different. Right. Yeah. We watched, uh, so, and you know, as everybody knows, next week's show is going to be freaking awesome. Not that this one isn't, because <laughs> this is a good show too. But next week's show is going to be really great. Um, so Brian and I have been doing research on Jane Elliott. And one of the things that he and I have been talking about is she did a, a, um, and I think we had this discussion, was it with Eunice as well? Who was it that we were talking to? We were talking to somebody else. Um, no, it was Tiffany, Tiffany Huntsman. Oh yes, Tiffany. That's we were talking with Tiffany and we were discussing how Jane Elliott had done her, her black, brown eye, blue eye project in Britain. Now, or over in Europe. Now, Europe is is a little is is a lot more, from what I've been told, susceptible to African American. They don't they don't have what we have. They don't have that same type of outward problem that we have. But when I was watching this one particular one that Brian had sent to me, the problem is there. It's underlying. It's underlying, and and. You had people that walked out because they were like, you know what? I, I don't have to go through this. I don't have to stand for this. We don't treat people like that over here and I'm not going to do it. Then you had those that were like, well, I'm going to stay, but I, I, I don't 
it's not it's not going to affect me any. I don't get anything from it. And that's the group that I want to talk about. This one lady who was a teacher, she was so pissed. She was like, you're mistreating me. She happened to be the blue eye. So she was being mistreated. And she was like, you're mistreating me because of, you know, my eye color. And we don't do stuff like that. And we don't this and we don't that. And that's not how we do it here and blah, blah, blah. And then they go to lunch break. And when they go to lunch break, she actually had the nerve to sit and talk with some, some of the people from the blue eye because she didn't like how they were only given sandwiches while the brown eye people were given this lavish lunch. And so she's talking and she talked about a little black girl, beautiful little black girl who had fallen and scraped her cheek, scraped her skin. And when she scraped her skin, she was like, oh, I was very shocked that it was pink, but you don't need it. How you gonna be? How, how do you sit here and go through? Oh, we don't do that here. We don't this. We don't that. Blah blah blah. I don't know. Maybe I thought it was black. She was pink. But there's a lot of people out there like that. There's a lot of people who get shocked when they find out that African descended people get sunburn. Can get sunburn. <laughs> It just blew my mind. That's just like saying that my blood ain't red like yours. Mm. You know what I mean? That's that's just that's that's what it was saying. My blood is not red like yours. You mm. peel my skin back, you wouldn't be able to tell me from the next person. You look at a skeleton, you wouldn't even, you wouldn't be able to tell if that skeleton was black or white or native or Latin or what have you, unless you had someone who studies bones. That's the only way that you can tell that that was an African-American, a European, a native. That's the only way because they know something different is there. But you wouldn't know it any other way. So please do not come and tell me that because I scraped my skin, you thought my skin was going to be black underneath it. Like I just, y'all, I'm on a whole nother level when it comes to <laughs> <laughs> oh, because I have I have a feeling we're coming up to time. I haven't seen the FIBA flash us any any minutes, line, but I, I have a feeling we're getting up there. So as Donia said, next week we are being joined by Jane Elliott, who did a very famous brown eyed versus blue eyed. She she basically it was such an inventive way of doing it. Yes. She didn't teach racism instead of separating people by skin color. She did eye color, blue eyed, brown eyed. And to say that the blue eyed people came out of that with a whole new kind of level of, well, not all of them. Many of them came out of it with a whole new worldview. Right. Basically the blue eyes were treated like non-whites, brown eyes were treated as whites. And mm -hmm. it's revelation, 4 p.m. next Sunday, she's gonna be here. I can't promise that all of the language is gonna be family friendly. I'm just gonna put that little, <laughs> Jane, Jane is very plain speaking, which is what we love about her, which is why we really wanted to have her on the show. As Donnie's yes, let's favorite, warn them. <laughs> as, Donnie, as Donnie's favorite saying is, she does not hold any cut cards. Yes. <laughs> yeah, she, so you might catch a little slip of the tongue, a little cursing every now and then. It may come out. I'm not saying that it will. It might. So don't be shocked or, or, or surprised because it just might. But I'm trying to tell y'all this, that... You know, I am so glad that Eunice joined us because she's oh giving up. She's dropped some extremely awesome gems. And Eunice, mm -hmm. you, you know, you and I, you know some stuff now that we didn't know 2006, what, last in 2018. Right. <laughs> so you know how we connect. You get it. So mm -hmm. hey, cousin. <laughs> All right. We knew we were cousins. It's kind of a life. <laughs> <laughs> we knew we were cousins. We just didn't know what it was, but now we do. Now we do. And, yeah. uh, um, and I'm so glad to hear that. And that's the way you're saying that you relate to me is the same way that you relate to Brian. No. Well, that's no, one of. Yes, it is. Because Brian is connected. Is a Harlan. Donnie is a Harlan too. Yeah. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. You got to understand, Brian and I connect on eight different lines. Okay, okay. So it could have be, been any one of them. Okay. It could have been anything. Okay. <laughs> anything, trust me. But um, um, I have absolutely loved having you on the show because, again, your, your research just covers so much. Yes. It's so extensive. And it just covers so many different groups of people in so many different parts of the slaveholding South. I've 
I could easily talk to you for about another hour. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Because again, no matter where you're researching, each region has its own kind of character. It has its own set of records. It has its own set of challenges and mm -hmm. barriers and, and bonuses as well. Um, so it's been really, it's been really wonderful talking to you and, and finding out about the kind of records that you use, your kind of go-to places, the strategies that you've developed, that kind of, that um that you've made work for you. So yes. it's, uh, it's been really, really ple such a pleasure. Thank you. I've enjoyed it. So really quick question before we sign off, Eunice, is there um information? Do you have like a website that people can contact you with? Um, do you or you know just what are your contact? Do you have any contact information to to share. I, do. I do, I do. I have a webpage, familytreebuff.com. That is my my personal webpage. It has my blog. Uh, and a lot of the, uh, the the research that I've been gathering is on is, is there, a part of my blog. I have a YouTube channel, Family Tree Buff at youtube.com. That's my YouTube channel. And you can follow me on Facebook. Facebook, Twitter. And it's all Family Tree Buff. All family tree buff. Well, I've already put the website up there um, and we'll make sure that we get all of the other information up there. So again, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you all for having me. I, I really, really enjoyed it. Enjoyed talking to cousin and connecting with cousin and putting it out there so that we can we can continue to find our ancestors and sometimes and break some of these these the cycle of, of generational trauma that's passed down from generation to generation as we find our ancestors to go forward. Thank you guys. All Thank right. So, okay, goodbye everybody. We love you. Have a great, Bye. happy Mother's Day. Enjoy your day. Treat your mommies great. Treat your mommy daddies great because sometimes daddies are mommies as well. Um, just like sometimes mommies are daddies. So, you know, handle your business. Take care of your family. I'm Danya. I'm Brian. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. And yes. I'm Eunice Buffington, the family tree buff. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everybody.